So James Harden and the Houston Rockets are in a pretty interesting situation if you ask me because on one breath they surprised the hell out of me and probably a lot of people this year as they embraced offense. Mike D'Antoni, James Harden, the even more of the primary ball handler. You sign Ryan Anderson, Eric Gordon, trade for Lou Williams. You win 55 games. Way to go. But then when they were going up against the San Antonio Spurs, a team that, I mean, a little better, but also just a really smart team, they found a way to just kind of shut down the Rockets' high-powered offense, which was they had the big man back up in every single James Harden pick and roll, dared Harden to shoot mid-range jumpers and floaters that he doesn't really want to take. It helps that San Antonio's big guys, while not the best defensively, are just really freaking big. And then they also just didn't help off of shooters. And it just kind of stopped everything the Rockets wanted to do. And so now Houston's in this really interesting spot of being really good, but I don't think they're good enough to even be considered title contenders. I mean, if you lose the deciding game six at home with Kawhi Leonard not playing, you're not a title contender. Simple as that. They're also effective on one side of the floor, mainly, which is offense, and they're also a one-dimensional team in terms of their system. It's James Harden pick and rolls, and I think... That team is just too easy to plan for in the playoffs. You know, they might win a crap ton of games in the regular season, but I think they're going to need an, a shakeup or an addition here to really be considered title contenders. And the guy that I want to talk about is Paul Millsap. Now, Millsap, there's a risk with his free agency because, I mean, one, he's going to cost a lot, you know, probably more than $20 million a season. Two, he's 32 years old, so... When is he going to start to decline? And when is it going to be like you're overpaying him significantly for the actual output he's giving you? But do you say screw it and do it anyway because he might be the one guy who can push you over the top? Well, here's my thinking with Millsap, okay? Number one, the Rockets are not a good defensive team. Ryan Anderson is their power forward. I should also say, before I actually go into that stuff, if they wanted to entertain the idea of signing Millsap, they would have to dump Ryan Anderson's contract, which is about $19 million. And to do that, you'd probably have to attach like a first-round pick to it, and even then you might have to get more creative. I do think someone would be willing to take on Ryan Anderson, but they definitely have to be getting more than just him in the deal, unless it was to like the Brooklyn Nets, who will just do anything for a first-round pick. And I think the reason you would do that is because, one... Millsap, defensively, he's in a different world than Ryan Anderson. I mean, that's almost as big of a defensive jump at one position that you can possibly make. Because if you go down the best defensive power forwards, the only two off the top of my head who I can confidently say are better defensively than Millsap are Draymond Green and Anthony Davis. He might be number three, Millsap, defensively at the power forward position. But then offensively, he would give Houston so much more versatility because I think that was their biggest problem against San Antonio. It wasn't that the Spurs figured out how to defend them. It was that Houston didn't have a plan B. They just stuck with what they do and what they did didn't work. So now they're like, well, screw it. We don't know what to do. Millsap gives you way more playmaking than Ryan Anderson ever did. And as a result of this, if you had James Harden getting screens from Millsap and the defense decided to switch in the past your offense would now be okay give it to Harden or he'll already have the ball and he'll go one on one with the big man if you have Millsap you can still do that but you could also just give it to Millsap and he can post up on the guy that just switched on to him because he's a really good post up player especially against mismatches but he's also a strong ball handler so even if he's at the perimeter with a smaller guy on him, he'll just back him down and start dribbling Charles Barkley style from the three-point line, and he can back him down and do things. And this is the sort of thing that they were really missing against the San Antonio Spurs. Now, I know there could be some concern about Millsap's three-point shooting. Past two seasons, he has not been good from three. The two years prior, he shot like 36% from outside, which would be fine on this Houston team. Here's what I say to that. Number one, the open looks that Millsap could get would be 
way more than he's ever getting in Atlanta, just with James Harden and everything they have going on with this team. So you could see his three-point percentage rise. But also, even if he's not a great three-point shooter for you, his ability to play make is so good that it might not even matter. Like, if you give him open space with a free lane to the basket, he'll just get his Draymond Green on and just drive inside, and then he'll gladly finish, or you're going to have to bring help defense, and he's a very good passer, so he can just kick it out to the open guy. It just gives you more stuff offensively, while also making you significantly better on the defensive end. And I think that sort of a thing would give you an actual chance against the San Antonio Spurs, for example. And then if you just look at defense, if I can jump back to that, I mean, you have Harden at the two, which, I mean, he is what he is defensively. But then you got Beverly, who's good, Clint Capella, who's cool, and then Trevor Ariza, who's fine also defensively. Like, And then you would have Millsap. I mean, that that's like four good defensive players. I mean, you have two lockdown defenders and then two guys who are okay around Harden. That could be enough. Now, I have done some searching for this topic, and one thing I've seen is people saying, well, Millsap wouldn't be the best fit. And, I mean, I already talked about the three-point shooting and all that. You know, how him being open could result in him making more and all that stuff. But another thing I want to ask is, should Houston not change their game plan? Like, I think they kind of capped out last season with what they were going for, which was shooters around James Harden just going all offense. I mean... What, they won 55 games and they lost in round two to the Spurs. Like, how much better do you expect that team to be? Like, if you insert Paul Millsap, sure, there's going to be some times when Millsap wants to post up and not stand at the three-point line. Or there's going to be times when, I don't know, they're going to be expecting him to shoot a three and he continues the offense by dribbling, which is what Ryan Anderson is never going to do. I get that it might not be the most seamless fit in the world, but I also think the potential for that team is way higher than what Houston has right now. Because I don't see how the hell they get better from this previous season if you keep the same roster. Millsap makes you significantly better on defense, and he just gives you way more stuff to do on offense. He also helps out James Harden some as well, because it's another guy that you have to pay attention to with his playmaking and all that. Also, you could get Millsap in the post, and then you could have some action around that, which once again just forces the defense to have to make more adjustments because San Antonio only had to make one adjustment and the Rockets had no answers. But of course, age is a real thing with Millsap. I mean, 32 years old, he might decline the moment he shows up. He might give you one fantastic season. He might give you two fantastic seasons. I don't know. James Harden's, what, 27 years old at this point? I just think with a guy like Harden and you have this championship window that he gives you because I think he's that good, you got to surround him with that talent. I mean, if you think Houston can get better from what they've done last year with just keeping what they have and, you know, you re-sign Nene and maybe get one guy with your mid-level, then cool. Personally, I don't see that. I think a guy like Millsap gives you a real chance against San Antonio as well as the Warriors. I don't know. I think the age would be the biggest question. Now, of course, Paul Millsap is not the only really good NBA player who you could potentially get. I mean, I've thought about Eric Bledsoe for them. The thing is, I don't really see how they trade for Bledsoe because I imagine Phoenix would want, like, first-round picks that they can actually get something for, and the Rockets' first-round picks are going to be, you know, around, like, number 25 or so, so that's not as valuable to a team like Phoenix that's rebuilding. Just think Millsap would make a lot of sense for them, man. Wouldn't be the most seamless fit in the world immediately. Well, it might be, I don't know. But I think the potential, the defense, the playmaking, the options, or the more options that it gives you on offense, I think that's what Houston's missing, man.